out of promises of social change that the wartime economy made, but peacetime society failed to deliver. To serve my country, to serve my race, is the story of more than 2,500 African-American women who first joined the armed services during World War II. These members of WAC, the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, performed a number of assignments overseas and at home to free men for combat duty. Hi, I'm Kathy Wiggins. For the next hour, we will talk to authors, historians, and some of those courageous African-American women who enlisted. This is their story. Every happy gal. That's the story of my mother's old prescriptions. Day. The narration that be my own. I've never been to a place out of Philadelphia, and all the captures says, see the world. That's what I wanted to do. I heard a lot about it. I wanted to go. It was very, it was, it was against my family, it was against my religion. I just wanted to go. I guess about six months before they decided that they would even listen to me. And he and finally one of them said, well, she's just so persistent, we got to get her something to do. And so then, uh, uh, so one of the, uh, one of the fellows said that, uh, well, how about being an escort? Great, great for me. And this was, you, you had a scooter, and you went all over town, all over the field, uh, delivering messages. Yeah, and I used to have that wheeling. So therefore, I knew all the fellows around, you know, and the, and all the places that, that they needed uh, information or, or transportation with these things that I could put in my little cart. And I was having a very happy time with this. And that, that society, and, and I being from the North or just being myself, you know, everybody was good. There's one time that um, there was a group of us that went out in Tuskegee there, and we decided that we wanted to vote because they didn't, they weren't allowed to vote in, uh, uh, in, in in the South. And um, went out the headquarters there. They had a little, a little two by four. And uh, we decided we wanted to vote. It was during that time that we wanted to vote. And the blacks could not vote unless they could read the Constitution. And we could all read the Constitution. And so uh, we decided that that's what we wanted to do. And the town found out about it. So they had men sitting out on the, on the, on the lawn there with shotguns. And um, we found out that that's what they were. So we all got equipped too. And if anything happened, each one of us supposed to get one. <laughs> oh, we didn't know. All we just put our names down there. They took the papers and ripped them up in front of us. But it was just the idea of being brave enough to go through this. And the people of the town, the, the, the blacks of the town would look at us and almost like shudder because they didn't know what would happen to us because we were defying uh, their principles or whatever they had, you know, that, that, that you're not supposed to, hold, that you, you know, that you couldn't hold. I'll tell you a story about integrating the pool uh, because uh, the black women, uh, they had certain days for your unit to go and use the pool. And uh, she talks about how uh, she was commanding an integrated group and that was how they integrated the pools finally, uh, was that the, when they, the people saw the, the, the integrated unit go into the pool, then that's when everybody started using it at the same time. The, the theory was that the black unit used the pool last because of uh, the fact that you could clean it out then and uh, put, in, put in clean water for the next group. So, uh, so everybody else got to use the pool first and then the, whack, the black unit used it last. Are you going up in the in the um, uh, Tuskegee Bay when you went in the, um, the post office or whatnot? There's certain doors in uh, 
places you had to eat. One guy said, you know, he went in the place and he said, well, we don't serve niggas in here. He said, I'm glad because I don't eat them either. <laughs> it was really not of United States. You couldn't imagine it being the United States. Most of them were from the north. Mm -hmm. most, of, most of those fellows were from the north, and those who were from the south, they just, when you got a lot of little liquor in you, you were all, we were all together there, you know, north or south. And you were all in this area where the whites didn't come into this area. So that's where they had their bands, they had their music, and they had all, it was just like a, a, a community, mm -hmm. you know? And they didn't have to, if they wanted to get out of there, they'd fly out. There was a quota system that was not, but it was more difficult because you were black and being female, you had two strikes against you. The difference in your skin color has always made the difference, and I suppose as long as we live, it always will. Yes, I know about parishes before, and I've never been around so many of my own people, but not too many of the other people, you know, the, the whites, and I learned to understand a little bit more about my own race that I didn't know before, and that, um, um, we need a lot more interaction so that they can learn more about them and they can learn more about us. And that in spite of all of that, my fellow man still has hope. He has beauty. He has, he has, he doesn't give up. And um, it was just, it was just wonderful because I was away from home, away from my mother, and I was allowed to see all kinds of people. And I found out that they were beautiful tenth of our brain as far as that's concerned and, and and we need to that we need to communicate with one another because we all have something to offer right now I might like to do it again but it would take power it would take wisdom and it would take things that we haven't learned yet. And in fact, now I feel that the government is actually losing ground. We'll burn the flag like nothing. It means nothing to us. We'll kill the president like nothing. It means nothing to us. Our morals, everything, is go it's almost feel like it's going down the drain. Although I know uh, we still got to have that hope, and I still know there's lots of good people there, but we're putting the wrong people into the office where they belong. live together. If we get in an airplane and go about a thousand miles up, I wouldn't know whether you were black or white or what kind of clothes you wore. But when we get close to each other, we have all kinds of things going. And God has such a, a vast program, and we're not even aware of it. And if we could have the idea of who he is and what he is, and to know who we are and whose we are, this would be a whole new, better world to live in. And it makes me weep that they don't know. And 
that we're putting him so far back. Tell the children, you know, or, or young adults, about the basic avenue to success. Working hard, doing your homework, homework I don't necessarily mean schoolwork. Be ready when the door opens, and when the door opens, walk in and be qualified. And, and don't expect anyone to give you anything. You have to earn it. to allow African-American women to join the armed forces. Ironically, it was that same pressure that fueled these women to rise above the call of duty. But it would take more than just this hour tribute to illustrate the impact that these women had on the military and the military had on their lives. But it is a start. To the women who gave their lives, who fought, and who are still fighting, we thank you.